great, no problem. All right, um, I think some guys who are already watching us live will be broadcasting in the next few minutes. I'm just waiting for uh, my colleague, uh, Simon. So what I want you to do for the next few minutes, I wanted to take a friend, invite a friend. Uh, we'll be starting just now, and um, it's my hope that you're going to be inspired. So on Monday, we started a conversation which was revolving around financial freedom. Uh, one of the key things that I'm so passionate about is to see people becoming effectively in control of their finances. And that's why I want us to really get to participate in these conversations. So the purpose of today's conversation, as I, I know many people might actually have missed the webinar that we did last time. Uh, the purpose of these webinars is to help you get to a point where you become effectively in control of your finances. So this coming Saturday, we have got a free webinar. So I, I don't want you to, to miss this wonderful opportunity where you get to, yeah, get to learn some ideas on how you can make money online. So I want you to invite a friend, take a friend for the next few minutes. Uh, my good friend Simon is just arranging a slide so that you're able to actually follow uh, the presentation. That's why I, I want us to take this advantage to just share the video uh, with uh, a good friend or someone you think is going to benefit from this. Uh, interestingly, during the period of COVID, the COVID period, uh, one of the things that we actually noticed is that several businesses actually grew. So Jeff Bezos, I'll give you a common example. A gentleman who is in e-commerce, he's not manufacturing any particular product, but he's simply in e-commerce. Uh, one of the things that we see is now his wealth is actually doubled and is now uh, the first person, you know, this in history to, to go beyond the $100 billion mark. Now, is doing so much wonders because of the e-commerce, the advantage of knowing how to use the internet. That's why this conversation is going to be very important uh, for, for all of us to, to be able to understand and to capture. So what I want us to do uh, besides inviting friends, I wanted to um, also post questions. I can see uh, some people, Maslin Chamusa watching from Cape Town there. Uh, Lovely Shizua, how are you? Thanks for or coping. In fact, it's Vanessa who is uh, tagging loveness. It is what I have with how are you doing? Uh, Natasha Dana, uh, thanks so much for, for the tag there. Um, then, Kukunda Kadoguru and Shigapano, yeah, definitely you need to be here. So, what, what we want to encourage more and more is we, we need to be comfortable with these conversations. You see, one of the things that I'm always repeating and emphasizing is we. We are not entertainers. I want to get that point. We are not entertainers. And because we are not entertainers, we, we want to touch on things that are very really bearing on your day to day life. So, indicate to us where you're watching us from. I want to do some shout outs whilst I'm waiting for, for my good friend Simon, who's going to be joining us now. Um, Baubia Mutambi says, How about you? Welcome yeah. back. Yes, uh, yes, maybe, maybe. Great stuff. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I think you're actually becoming a celebrity, Ngoma. Uh, I'm seeing ladies <laughs> watching from Guinness. Uh, Is it? Yeah, then uh, Cleverton Matema Dombov watching oh, from Pemba, okay. Mozambique. Hans, big man, how are you? Um, Ireland, Moyo. Oh, wonderful. So I I'm actually going to be speaking to 
to some guys in Ireland on Zoom, I'll post the flyer. So I want you to, as well to be part and parcel of that. I'm seeing Soweto here is being represented at Nottingham Abaza Shadoka, watching from Edfield, Canton Park. Um, uh, I can see the priest cheering. Uh, you know what? You need to, you need to become a DJ. You're very kind. You're very, very kind. Um, I'm seeing the numbers are rising. So what I want us to do is to to invite more people. Let's invite more people and uh, ensure that we... I, I really want this thing to benefit many more people. That's, that's right. Yeah, that's you know, what, what's interesting is uh, we, I'm going to be touching a little bit on the things we, we talked about on our last session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, probably almost a month ago, and I keep saying, which yeah. is there are some one-on-ones right now on just to get online. So um, we're going to share a little bit about the... Yeah. Uh, the, uh, which we shared on the previous uh, session, which was about just the, top, the, 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 the ways in which money is being made right now. I'm just going to show two case studies, really quick ones, but then we're going to get into a bunch of questions. Uh, that's, that's, that's great. That's great. Let, let me hold you a bit. I want to just do a bit of shout outs. I'm seeing uh, Taking Zoande, uh, mm -hmm. Natasha Dana. Thanks for, for the ad. She's watching from, uh, from Abu Dhabi. Uh, great stuff. So I, I think you can take over now. No, no, fair and fine. Let's, uh, do, do you want to, what, what do we, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. All right. So, uh, so before you came, I, I, was, I was just introducing the, the area that people are really making money online. And this is a reality. Um, later on, I would want you to be able to distinguish between scams and how we can really make genuine, legitimate mm. money online. Oh, yeah. um, I, I know several people have been, who have been conned of their hard end money. So Painful. if you have a smartphone, yeah, which is the bulk of our audience. If you want a smartphone, uh, I think the next thing that you need to be to doing is to be a smart user. Yeah. In other words, that phone should be in a position to actually generate revenue. To create Absolutely. revenue. And and this, these gadgets have become like modern day my computers. Right? Uh, you know, there's so much you can do with them. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So you see, Koma, um, I, I'm giving you time just now. Yeah, yeah sure. You know, interestingly, in 1969, when America was able to send three men to the moon, mm -hmm. they, they used a computer which only had 65 kilobytes memory size. <laughs> okay. But 65. The moon? Okay. 65. And, and the distance between Earth and the moon is 388,000 kilometers. And the rocket, um, we are talking of millions of cages here, it was moving at a speed of 27 kilometers per second in 1969 just to indicate the level of technology that we have at our disposal. Meaning once we understand this level of technology, mm. that we can actually do more. If, if you're on Facebook, we can actually do more. Goma, I don't want to take your slot. So, no, 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 Goma, no, no, no. I want you to take us through. Um, you what, what you uh, you, this is exactly <laughs> what we should be touching on. Because I, I want you to, to go back. Uh, I know many people have never done anything online. They're uh -huh. asking, can I actually do this online? I'm a student. I'm a housewife, but I got a smartphone. I'm, 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 a, I'm a graduate from the university. I can't find a job. What is it that I can do? And where can I possibly start? I think that's, that's the level one speech. Okay. Then uh, I think on, on Saturday, we're going to go greater now in detail as to how to get started. Goma, back to you. I want you now to, to take over. I'll be interrupting you along the way just to give you feedback. What are we getting as well from our Facebook? No, absolutely. No, that's good. That's good. I think... Um... Let me start off by just saying, for those who don't know me already, uh, please just look it up uh, or find out from the previous session we did. Um, so I've been I've been playing in the internet area for quite some time now. Jim Boyz and I'm talking early 2000s. Uh, we were building uh, websites before builders exist that allow you to build websites in the way that we can build them these days. Yeah. Uh, and I've had multiple businesses in that space, um, and all of them have been designed to. Um, try and win in this area, you know, you know what I mean by that other yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's, it's one area I've been trying to do for so long. And, yeah. uh, and I shouldn't say trying because I finally got there, but it was pretty tough on that. I think the one thing that helped me back was that, again, you know, I had a bit of a degree and I thought Andrew Zajagawanda, so some of the things were a bit too simple. And you think, ah, oh, well, it can't be that easy. So it's funny because over the years, I can look back to moments where people who just, what came in with a, a level of, um, what do you call it, without the intelligence, came in with an open mind are the people yeah, who succeeded yeah, because they took chances and tried, and tried things. 
So yeah. I'll start on that note. I, I think with all of this, uh, I think it's understanding that you just have to start. I think mm. when you talked about that, uh, did you talk, was that a housewife you just said just now? Was it yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, example, actually. Uh, maybe give me that example again. I'll be more specific. Yeah. You, you were saying a housewife, Ari? Yeah, you're a housewife. You're very small. You're very smart one. And the question is, what do you do? What do you do first? How, you start it? how, how can you begin to make money online? Yeah. Um, we also give, give an example of a graduate. By the way, in Zimbabwe, we've got one of the shocking rates of unemployment. Um, yet, there's a point that you always mention, Koma, that if you want to make money, learn to forget about Zimbabwe. Um, <laughs> I love that statement. Your money is not necessarily in Zimbabwe. So long. And your, your money is out there. So the question is, how do you take money from outside the country and bring it to Zimbabwe? Yes. So, yes. So, what, well, one didn't mind. Sorry, now I'm not going up. But um, so, really, the, the reality is that um, on my journey, it became one of those I got to find a solution. I finally did. So, what I've been doing over the years is just helping people understand that this stuff exists. My biggest frustration at the moment, like I said, is that people think this is really complex and it's getting complex if you choose to make it complex. So my goal is to make it very simple. So let's, do, let's take those two examples of um, just a housewife and then we can talk about a, a student. Um, if I, if I, maybe the better question if you were asking me is, what would you do if you all you had a, was a phone and you needed to start an online business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And, and enough data to get online and, and connect and do stuff. Um, I, I would be saying right now, the simplest thing to do is to decide what type of um, uh, connection you want with the, in, with the outside world. You know, are you a public person or are you a, you know, a, a person who's just happy to, to stay behind the scenes? I'm a behind the scenes guy. Did not number two? I like being number two, right? But there's moments when I'm happy to be number one. So uh, if you think about it, uh, so if you understand that your goal is to... Um, if, if, you're, if you're an outward person, then really the simplest thing you can be doing with your phone is understanding that you can create your own brand. Now, you've heard that term and I hear it all the time and I think, ah, come on, guys, my brand, my brand. No, what your own brand is, is something that says, like, I recognize you and I, I resonate with you. Right. So the first thing I'll be doing is just uh, allowing myself to uh, consider what type of content I want to create. You know, mm -hmm. is it, what, what am I good at? So let's think about that housewife. Housewife, we... Uh, if, especially if they're in Zimbabwe, let's just think of a real case. Someone in yeah. Zimbabwe who's a wife, housewife today on your phone. Um, you need to understand two things. Yeah. The things that we're doing online uh, are effectively we're looking for information. You know, if I'm look, I'm either looking or I am giving, right? That's true. That's true. And I always say to people, if you are, if you find that you're the one always taking, there's yeah. something wrong, you know. You need to think about what type of creator you are. Now, creators can come in so many ways. Kunewari out there, like I said, Vanita, Shosha Mizira, and uh, they, they, uh, they've got really high egos or loud voices, whatever it is. Then there's some people who are just out there saying, here's what I do. So that housewife, if you think about um, the, the, the process I would go through, number one is going to find out what uh, other housewives, just like you, uh, are discussing and talking about. Yeah. Um, and that might not even be about location. It might just be what do what are what are your Facebook groups doing? So let's start on Facebook. What are what are people talking about in those groups? Add value in those groups. Start create start responding to people. Don't just be an observer. Start doing that. Start uh, um, feeding back, feeding back. After a short period of time, which I want to know, opens out. Because they start to admire your level of knowledge and whatever that thing is. So let's assume you've joined a group of uh, diaspora ladies or local ladies, or uh, there's so many groups who are cards at the moment and in the Zimbabwean community, uh, where maybe you're sharing uh, about properties and how you built your house, for example. There's a really famous one, Ponzi Zim. I've forgotten the name, but I know my wife is in it. So that's how I know about it. I don't think my Jensen of or something I'm in. But um, in there, there's, there's so many lovely stories of people achieving stuff. And yeah. you know what's sad about it is social media takes all that information, you love it, you watch it, and then it disappears. Yeah, in that sad. environment, it's taking that knowledge, that information, and being able to package it in a way that is valuable to someone else. Yeah. So if I was that lady, uh, I'm sitting in Zimbabwe, I'm in a group where there's people from all over the world. The one yeah. thing I've been listening for is what do you guys want to know about Zimbabwe right now that I can en enrich you on? That's Sorry. a very simple one. And sometimes it can be as simple as, uh, I just want to know, um, you know, when you live, like I don't live in Zimbabwe, I mean, I come in and out, 
But when you don't live in Zimbabwe, the first thing you struggle with when you land at the airport, Abba, is that you don't even know what the current Zerushan and AP. You don't know uh, which Econet line to get or which buddy to get or which net one to get. You don't even know how to get connected. That's the first thing you're challenged by. So the minute you walk past that into that airport, you're thinking, okay, I need someone who knows the local knowledge. And there's never anyone, I've never seen someone standing saying, I've got a pack ready to sell you that tells you how to, how to do ABCD, how to yeah. set up your payments, connect your zip it to this, this. You guys are amazing how you're doing it because it's yeah. so complex, but my, my, my Jaira, so you know it, right? So I think the first thing I'm doing is just observe the environment and think about what content you can create to feed those people. I think I can go on forever, but you get the point. Definitely, definitely. Should we move on to the to the student? I Next think, let's actually go to this to the screen. Eh? Um, I remember you actually. Oh yes, I put some slides. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So, so what I wanted to share on this is the three slides, uh, kind of part of our, uh, the session we spent together uh, with the other group, I remember. and we were talking about uh, this. This is our. I'm just going to see if I can navigate my way through this. Uh, I think you, you can all see that. You can see that, Arthur, right? I think I should be. Let me. Should. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. I'm just going to see if I can uh, check in here as well. Let me know if you if you if you can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Brilliant. Okay. So we we talked about the fact that um, there was some really entry some some simple entry level stuff that you can do to get into the into the world, and I yeah. keep harping on about the fact that we're living in a knowledge economy. Whenever you go on the internet, you are searching for something. And, some, mm. and, and these search engines that we call Google, Yahoo, whatever, Bing, Yahoo, Shandi Saga, you got to remember they're just machines, right? That's Their right. job is to find information that sits around the internet, in social media, in tweets, in uh, anything public, you know, about information, you know, told that information, and it's bringing it together in yeah. a way that when I search for it, I get that information quickly, right? right. If we get that concept right. Uh, if we capture the concept, we'll quickly realize that if you want to become part of the people who are going to go on the internet, you just need to be creating content to feed those searches. Mm. Because Google does not know uh, anything. You know, if you typed in something in Shona right now, uh, like um, Roseva, you know, just type in Roseva in Google, you find that it will, it will, it goes out and looks for the, the last time or somewhere where someone mentioned the word Roseva where people are saying, oh, if you want to know reserve and I don't know taste you know what I mean? Someone has had to create that content. You're so right. when I say we're living in a knowledge economy, uh, what's re the reality of what's happening now is that a lot of people are, 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 are getting used to requesting things of, say just Google, for example, I will use Google as an example. They're requesting information from Google that is, um, uh, that is so diverse. You know, pe people now will type in, what time is it in, in Lusaka? in Google and expect a real-time answer. And Google is getting clever, right? The, all that information that it's publishing is people is other people's information that it publishes in front of you. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. want to become the creator. So when I talk about the knowledge economy, I'm just talking about how do you share anything you know on the internet, whether it's through a video, YouTube, through text, blogging, through, yeah. um, what's the other one? Uh, through becoming an influencer, uh, getting yeah. a following. Th these are all channels to get your content out, right? Yeah, yeah. So this slide is just showing us the fact that, you know, uh, in, uh, I think that, what year was this? I think this is uh, 2017, Amazon Kindle. This is a place where you can write a book about anything, right? Mm. Just anything, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, about Kokabar or Wagazo, high school days, whatever you want to write about. As yeah. long as it's got interest with the people who are searching for this content, which people are quite diverse. You've got to remember out there, there's someone out there who's just like you who's waiting yeah. to read something that you've written because they just connect. You know? There's some people when you meet them, oh, we just connect. There's people like that sitting out there waiting to hear your message. So Kindle uh, paid out about 220 million in 2017. Wow. Right? These are people like you and me who just wrote books and some of them are big, big companies and big people, but there's millions of smaller people who just wrote a small 15, 20 page book or wrote uh, their life story and it's just captivating. And as humans, we just, we, just, we love the sharing information. That's why we travel to the diff different countries. That's why we wanna learn new languages. That's why we wanna eat different foods because we're sharing information. The internet has allowed us to share that information digitally. That's all that's happened. 
So yeah. that, that's Google Kindle for you. That's something anyone can do tomorrow. Start writing, start journaling as they call it. Then you've got the world of Google AdSense. This is another platform. This is, I know we're getting into, I don't want to too detail because when watch Arasika, unfortunately, because I haven't started from the top, but essentially uh, Google AdSense is effectively a, a tool that Google has prepared to pay people who create the content that they serve when you search. That's interesting. It's a tool that literally says, if you've created some content, you can actually share some of the money that uh, banner that those banners you see all over the internet are making yep. so if you go to someone's website at Aruba travel news or let's say one of these zim news websites and you see a banner don't just think that banner is there for fun right google is actually mm. um, targeting you because it knows that when they an interest in that ad most cases that's how clever it's become if you opt out of these ads thing it'll just show you something but if you clicked on one of those banners the person who owns that website is getting paid a wow. percentage of that ad of that banner that's and, and that and that's interesting right so if you look at that that's that was 10 billion 10 billion was paid out to publishers in 2018 who own blogs and when you look at the drawing or the diagram that shows you how many people are in that um means you go uh, kind of yeah you, you're probably looking at the, the 10 there's a there's probably a hundred hundred thousand people in the top and then not only they saw line out which means that there's a lot of people down here who create very small little websites who make 20 30 000, maybe even ten thousand a year just writing about stuff whatever it is that is interesting because remember if i search anything in google today whether i'm looking for a phone or watch or i just want to know about the weather in a different country if someone's published that information and they have these banners on their website they're getting paid if you click on those because that's what those banners are designed to do that's so interesting because you see it, it, it doesn't matter where you are as long as you can create this content mm -hmm. you can actually make money and look at the number 10 billion this is close to the gdp of zimbabwe wow yeah now that you say that i i, I totally get it it's it's phenomenal it's phenomenal mm -hmm. that that's that's just breathtaking when you think about it that way it is it is so finally youtube we all know youtube we all watch lots of youtube uh, yeah YouTube. Uh, YouTube is a, is, is, a, is a modern day gold rush, the way I put it, because <laughs> everyone who watches YouTube has something that they watch that is different from someone else. And as in, there's something for everyone. You're Can right. I say that that way? Yep, yep. Whether you're interested in DIY, or an on or screwdriver, compare my screwdrivers, you can write a video about compare my screwdrivers. Yeah, you're actually answering a problem. Answering a problem. That's what I mean by solving problems. Um, one of the one of the things I want to say to kind of Zimbabweans, uh, just especially the Zimbabweans in Zimbabwe and then the Zimbabweans in the diaspora, is that yeah. one of the th things you, uh, we need to do more of is to talk about what we want from each other. Because gotcha. so often we we bypass each other's knowledge in the hope that, and, and we, in the early days, and you, you, know, you, you trust your family more than you trust someone and then oh, oh, you know what I mean? This is so common, right? Yeah, yeah, it's right. <laughs> But, but we need to learn to trust each other within, with requesting information because one of the most challenging things right now about Zimbabwe, and I can guarantee you guys, is if you ask anyone who lives in the diaspora, is that a lack of information. You gotta remember, when you live in the diaspora, you've gotten used to fast information. You've gotten used to typing, Kuti, um, I need a t-shirt printed. These are 10 people, we're not gonna print it out. We are not printing us, we're on Amazon next week. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. We don't have that access in Zimbabwe. It's very hard to get information about anything in Zimbabwe. And in fact, uh, uh, I remember a time, uh, it's a really short story. I know we're, we're going to get to questions very briefly. Sorry, Atta, you know. <laughs> but uh, I remember in Zimbabwe, when I moved to Zimbabwe uh, for quite some time, and uh, I remember looking for someone to fix my printer. And Shan Dandene office and kind uh, of cafe type thing and uh, and the printer agafa and that's how we mo made most of our money on that printer because right. people would come there just to read instead of spending an hour on Google, on, on gmail achieving my email i will have a logger in or print my emails again <laughs> <laughs> and we are eh? it's optimized okay. <laughs> optimized so we realized the computer the printer was our biggest earner uh, and oh. When when that happened, when the printer went dead, most people would literally come in, say, printer as we shanda, wasn't fire, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. So I, I was like, okay, we need to fix this thing because that's our, our cash cow. So I remember at the time there was a site called 
Dip League, I believe it was, Diplomatic League or something. And I, I don't know if that still exists in the mailing list. Then there was, uh, so I'm sitting there thinking, oh, how do I get someone to fix my printer? Um, yeah. So first thing I thought was, okay, if, if I was in, 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 in the West or outside of Zimbabwe, I would typically go on Google and just type, to check a print. And the, the only people were able to have were classified. Yeah. That's all that would come up. And Facebook, lots of Facebook pages, but nothing is aggregated. So, so I went on classified. I emailed about two people, sent messages to people, picked up the phone, spoke to one more person. And then I went to this list of Deep League, which is effectively a mailing list of just loads of people. I got my email, it goes to about 10,000 people. I think it still exists somewhere. So I went on there, need a printer. The two people on, on, on classified called me back and said, oh, I'm talking messenger. That, Look, I'll come out $60. Um, I got $150 for your office. I think I was, that's where the office is green there. And, um, and then this one guy says to me, uh, on, on deeply kanzi she won't bother a fair young about town at two dollars at the time i'll come over to your office if i can fix it i'll fix it on badara if not then i won't and he came over to office and lo and behold he fixed it but wow. the point i'm making there is that it was so hard to to get to him that if he hadn't responded to my message in another choir right yeah, yeah. You're right. So I guess what I'm simply saying is, guys, the content we are sleeping on and saying, ah, you know what, everyone knows price or well, everyone knows uh, it's not common knowledge. It's in silos all across yeah. the world. That's you know true. what I mean? So anyway, I know I, dis I digress there, but the point I'm making there is YouTube is just a, a, an initial channel. If, if, you, if you've got your phone and you've got nothing else you can do, get, on, get, get your phone out. Don't be shy about how good or ugly you look because you're not ugly. everyone's beautiful in my eyes um, someone will see the beauty in you is what i mean right so the the reality is just get get on there stop worrying about how what you see and stop worrying about what you, you know because the problem is we're all on instagram to go on our watch and all the time don't go down his own color that's just that's just how what they want you to see right but the reality of this is any content that you push out someone will watch it if they're interested in it and then there's a whole world of keywords and stuff which you can get into. But as a fundamental basic, you just need a followership. You're right. Anyway, that's YouTube. So YouTube did about 7.5 million, a billion, sorry. And these are big numbers, guys. These huge. are publishers who are getting money for doing stuff. Huge, huge. But by the way, YouTube and Google is one company, is it? It is, totally. It's one. So we're talking about $17.5 billion being paid to people who have not produced their educational certificates to people who don't even disclose much, to people who are able to create the requisite content. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Interesting. And also, I think the, one of the key attributes is what, what you're talking about. These are attributes that can be learned. Yeah. In other words, you, you don't have to be born a creator. No, you can no. no, no, not at all. You, you just have to be able to get in front and create content in the simplest way possible for you. YouTube, YouTube. No, that's what it is. There's a point that you're raising, which is fundamental, which I'm always stressing. Hmm. Pretty much, you, you don't necessarily need to change what you're doing. You simply change how you're doing it. Yeah. You, so you're, you're like a teacher. You're, you're extracting all the knowledge. Out, but that's yeah. exactly the point. Yeah. So if you're selling tomatoes, for example, you don't need to stop selling tomatoes. No. You simply change how you're selling them rather than just going per corner. You make a digital presence, ensure that Runoshka <laughs> Mago Mundo Masiro. Did you think about US dollars as well, right? Did you think about US dollars and you make payments at that in real time? Goma, you mean and I realize we're actually a bad combination. Okay, can, I, can I force you? I want to force you to the questions that we, the that we received in the last webinar. Why, uh, why we're going to go through the questions? Because on the webinar for Saturday, we're actually going into a new area altogether. We were talking about how to get started. And uh, it's going to be much more detailed. So if you missed the first one, we're going to post again the replay link to the first webinar. Then the second webinar, please make it a point not to miss it. Yeah. And if you missed the Monday Live, I want you to go and watch it. You'll find it again. It's on our wall. Monday Live, it was really amazing. It was on financial freedom. So I want to take you through some questions that I uh, I saw from uh, from the webinar that we did, and the first question is, how do I get past the fear of uh, procrastination? How, how do I get past fear and procrastination? Pretty much, I think it's connected to getting started online. I don't know what would be your response to that. Yeah, that, that one's really uh, tough because we all have this voice in our head that's telling us, ah, 
Ajun Papaya, don't, don't do it. Mm. You know? can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it. And you know, I, I actually think that's a winning for, for people who are winners. And you know, I'd like to call myself a winner. I know that that's my trump card. That's my yeah. hidden secret that I just mm. act. And mm. if you get into that habit of just acting, you will find that you're going to break boundaries like that because it's all in your head. It's all in your head that something is not going to work. So my suggestion to that person is just get started. Try something. Interesting. And, you, and it, you, the rest will come together. And you, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a uh, um, God fearing man, and I know that God just works amazing ways. Like there's things yeah. that I've just put my finger into. And don't have to have a father. So just get just get started. It sounds too simple, but that's all I can say to friends. You're right. You know, you know uh, Nike, that uh, swoosh uh, sign, do you know it was designed for $35? All right. Where do you and... get this text from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go online. You're online, I'm sure. Okay. But it just, you, you know Nike's signature. Nike's hmm. signature is just do it. Yeah. Just get started. And, and, and I think that the best way to confront fear is by doing the very same thing you're afraid of. Yeah. And um, the, the moment once you, you start doing it, uh, you begin with the very same things that you're fearing, you, you begin to be comfortable. Uh, you know, at first I never knew I was going to be okay on stage, but not. When I got on stage and started opening my mouth and started speaking, guess what? I, I think I was able to actually confront all of my greatest fears. Mazuan, what are people going to say? And, and, and many other things. And I, I think I, I don't regret up to now taking that step of faith. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, there's uh, something called imposter syndrome that I, I would like to, to tell people about, which is yeah. when you feel you're an imposter, like it's, it happens every minute. Like even before Tatanga on this corner, do I have anything to tell these people? Do you know what I mean? Like we always have this kind of imposter syndrome, kind of to me, so from taking that step. Right. And I think one of the secrets I can tell you that I, I think I've used to with all the stuff that I've done, all the businesses that I've, uh, I've worked on is go the other way. Be like the, the, the stubborn guy that says, oh, what would you say? No, when they, when they, when they call, what would you say? And they don't, you know, always go the opposite side of that impossible voice that says you can't do it. Work on the other side. And it's a little secret that I've used multiple times. Well, there's a, there's a painter who used to say, when you hear a voice saying that you can't paint, uh, start painting and keep painting until that voice goes quiet. <laughs> that works. Same syndrome, right? Yeah, very we're interesting. We're fighting ourselves, yeah. We're fighting our own brains out there. It's such a, such a crazy situation, but yeah. Interesting. You know, you know what I said uh, initially, that your, your greatest disappointment is people thinking that all oh, this thing is complex. Uh, and in the moment that they realize that it's not complex, which is pretty much means we need to win the battle in the mind. Yeah. And I think that that's where and we'll get to win the bulk of the battles uh, by, by first winning that battle in the mind. Yeah. Uh, Go on. There's a question here. And so blogging and digital marketing is basically linked. That's the question. Is there a link between blogging and digital marketing? Okay, good question. So blogging is essentially the art of just writing content and putting it on the internet. Yeah. Mm. You know, originally, when I first discovered the world of blogging, I'm talking, so we, we exist, unfortunately. Before Facebook, we were, we were talking about all these things. We were in the beginning because I was still learning how to code those days. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Blogging is essentially, was, was essentially associated with uh, middle-aged women in America who would just write journals online about how life was as middle, you know, as middle classes and uh, things were just good for them. And they would just tell their stories and other people loved reading it. Maybe you can think of the days of those uh, romance magazines and I mean, my, my books, I, my Mills and Boons. And it was just, that was the idea of what blogging was until people realized that it was a, it was a method of communicating. Uh, a message. It's just how you communicate a message to the world. It's the most simplest form, written form. When you then flip into what digital marketing is, digital marketing is marketing on the internet. It's essentially taking whatever you are doing, marketing your rutambe with some banners, and saying, well, let's put it on the internet. Mm. And I think the main difference, and I got to say this, and this is so profound, is that we are living in a generation where I can target you so you know uh, because technology actually you have with you know what I mean? But you know, I must admit, um, you know, our businesses till this day, 
And, you know, there are businesses out there, sorry, uh, till this day who just, it's called re retargeting, where you just find an ad in Google Taylor everywhere. You send your cookies every time you go on your computer, when you click yes and not read the terms, we accept that these things follow you. And, yeah. you know, sometimes it's better for you to, to, to cuisine and know what and Jushitika yeah. and what was you. So digital marketing is effectively moving away from doing this mass marketing of everyone see my banner, whether you like it or not, to saying, yeah. how can I pinpoint and target my ad towards someone? So, so maybe it's at this juncture, I would say to someone who has a business in Zim and is selling uh, chickens or selling eggs on the street, not if eggs may be too extreme, but selling huku or uh, yeah, yeah. something in, pub, in, in, in different places, is try out this world of Facebook um, mm -hmm. ads. I know some of you think, no, it's, oh, boost yeah, 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 boost Those step number one, just, just press yeah. that button it's like ten dollars. Yeah, we will find someone out who takes one out of the and just be surprised by what takes place. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're because you're right. and and it's not. Um, I think as long as you go on YouTube, read, just watch something. But essentially, I mean, this is some of the stuff we teach on the One K Challenge. But look, understand uh, what your demographic is, because the Munaru Traga chickens for my mother's uh, anniversary. You could come say Saturday. But if he's on Facebook, I want to add, I want to know who's not going to deliver. I'm not delivering. That's it. And it, so it's, it's as simple as that. I don't think enough people are trying it to, because they just feel like it's too foreign, you know? So, so true. You see, I'll, I'll tell you a testimony. Um, I've been able to link up with you because of the power of, um, of, of, of the internet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like... Yeah. You've been able to see my content, which pretty much we, we I think we've been consistently posting. Yeah. And I think people really underestimate um, social media. The bulk of our bookings, you know, they come from Facebook. They wow. come from YouTube. Yeah, they come from WhatsApp. Yeah. Like, you no, know, we've read your content, we've read your article, we've read your audio, we've listened to your audio. We, which means that I think we've got everything that we actually do need yeah. in order to succeed in this digital economy. But you said a statement which really provoke something. If you don't make money in this period, right? you remember the statement? Yeah, yeah. Prepared to be broke right make money On the internet, online, you never make it in your life. It's going to be tough. Because guys, look what you're doing. At this stage, you know what I'm saying? You can't come back. I don't know what that term actually means in its origin, so excuse me if it means something else. But it, it it's effectively, we're in it and there's no going back. Yeah, right. Well, get on the bus. Uh, but we need to the bus. Richard, Richard, to slow down. I slow down. No, it's not. In fact, that's why they say they say go digital or go. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And, the, and you know what's sad about this, Arthur, is that we're all yeah. doing this already. Like, how many of us have posted a picture of your birthday or a wedding or said yeah. happy birthday on Facebook? How many have said have have, have posted a an event younger, if I told a selfie, I require a chain, I know what I mean. And that is content. The only problem is right now you're putting it into a place where how school bad are for that content. But the reason why I come to Facebook to see to get into my Facebook is to see content that other people, you and me, have produced, or my friend from school has produced, my my cousin has produced. Yep. What you, what, what we're simply saying is start understanding the value of that content because the person that you are up and DM is on Facebook. You're right. Because I had a picture of 10 pictures, I had a picture of my friend, and I had a picture of Mr. Zuckerberg. Yeah, so true. So if you are true. able to, to, to create a way in which you say, look, oh, this is half the content I can create, but my real content is here, my own home, my own little website, my own something, somewhere where you can now put up a banner. Don't know to blog you, by the way. Well, you have a blog of okay. That's an example of some way of instantly uh, using what you're already doing and turning it into money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goma, I need to take you to the next question, which um, I think is very interesting. I think you've heard a lot of people being scammed online. Mm -hmm. uh, someone was saying, um, "How do you distinguish between scams and genuine online investments or business?" ventures online. Um, I remember reading some story of some people who had invested in one of these uh, ventures and uh, they lost millions really. So now many people are quite skeptical. Uh, how do you distinguish 
that this is a genuine investment. This is a scam. Yeah. Um, I'm about to lose my money. Yeah. Ha. I think you is probably the most simplest one to answer is if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and what that simply means, if you see something is too good to be true, true. Normally in life, and you know, it's that attitude. You need to, if it's too good to be true, look closer at the detail. Get really close to the detail because it it's it's usually designed to look good, too good to be true. And because we're natures of quick, fast, and would I now now quick return then we think that's the way to go right. i think if you find any um uh, online opportunity that tells you you can earn money like tomorrow you're in trouble i'll give you an example again i remember two th- this is a long time ago but i remember one of my colleagues uh, he had just come to the uk and Taishan in the same building my, stu- my, my students i believe Taishan in the same building and he uh, and taking on my shift because we were just on my phones there my phone teaching. Oh, yeah. and he I walk into the room and he says, oh, you know what? I, 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 doesn't I win a $1,000 by internet? Mm. Oh, well, we win $1,000 by internet. <laughs> oh, you know, say, you know what I mean? This is like yeah. 2002 or one or something. And oh, but then one I got a message, Kati, Ningi, well, we know, click this button. In fact, I press and did it. But we ended up down into that world. Um, and before you knew it, uh, he had committed some, uh, put put some, some. Uh, I think he had to pay $20 to enter or something. And then it guaranteed, wow. he had paid 20 bucks and he was never going to get it back. But he was promised he was going to win some money in tomorrow. And he kept wishing it would happen. But it's it's too good to be true, guys. It's not, no one's going to give you free money, right? It's not, nothing like that. Nothing like that. So do your research, I guess, is the, is the bottom line on that. Do your research. And the research should, should not be... Uh, and then we'll check out the office address here. That's easy to do. It's mm. are these people are these people consistent? I come back to what you said, Arthur, just now. We, you've been publishing for so long. You know, yeah. we, we've known about Arthur since 2016, if not earlier, uh, because you've been consistent in your message. So one guy he said to me once, in any if I try and sell Mazai na Sandidi, and other camera seven, Mazai on thing. I think other because other seems to know um, you know there's something about him that's already said I buy from me you know what I mean so it's knowing that consistency is what you're looking for when you're looking out for scams that's anyone okay. who's who's a scammer will not have a history because they would have blanked out the previous moon I got a new history so I think that's nice it's so true you know I think one of the things that you actually say which we need to really emphasize um, you're not going to make money overnight. And by the way, these are not the things that we're teaching people. We're not saying you're going to make money overnight. No, no. Also. We're saying let's learn the ropes. Yeah. Let's be willing to embrace mm. uh, technology, the internet, the digital era. Mm. And let's start taking steps, one small step at a time. Yeah. And once we do that, you see, the, the Chinese say a journey of a thousand miles begins oh, by just one step. Yes. They, they even say the men who move to the mountain begin by moving small stones. Yeah. And this is the reason why we're doing this. Uh, and on Saturday, hopefully, in Koma, I hope uh, time is going to allow us to teach a go further in greater detail. Yeah. Then, I think because of our time, um, my question is, I wonder, I think for those who are more, please come to the webinar. Someone was asking about the concept here, here remote waiting. Okay, that's a good one. I mean, that's an important yeah. one, actually. Yeah, I'll touch on that. So remote working is effectively this is perfect for right now. Like, yeah. especially as well with stem degree I want, did <laughs> like we are so educated. Right now is our time. I don't know if I can say that louder than I've said it without yeah, sounding yeah. too loud. But remote working is effectively you are doing the job that you are used to. You are at Zaganda University for my masters. I got what we eat, but you're doing it from wherever you are. Ah. So if I give you an example, I started my, the business I run now is about nine to 10 years old. We're a digital business. So we sell a software to 45 different countries around the world. Uh, and we, about six years ago, yeah, about six years ago, internet to office, I got owner, right? Mm. Just went down. Uh, we then uh, said, okay, to all the stuff, let's in Egumba for the week, and they worked. And guess what? They worked way better 
and they were in the office because wow. office wangu ne rumors kune gossip ekutaura na kutendera apa takatosa ma ma kuti tuita ma 2 hour shifts of no of silence also <laughs> taura after 2 hours that was a way to stop them from wasting time when they went home they just worked much more smoothly they or they didn't commute all of that stuff as a result our business realized at that moment that we need, were going to be distributed so we reduced the size of our office when the internet came back and we only said work at the office once or twice a week and work from home most of the time that was 2015 or 16 this day and age now um by about 2018 sorry we realized Raishanda. so we, we took a chance i'm just giving you an idea of remote working at us in in this real reality i uh, we then had to our company was growing and we had to find a bunch of new staff and i remember saying to my business partner uh, you know what i think kune kune boys because mobile is not going to care you know i'm just mm-hmm. going and there's another is mobile in our company so we must be this good right let's try it out bought some laptops about four laptops um sent them over or someone was going over to zoom they landed we put up an ad again content we wrote a little piece on one of these blogs a zim blog by the way we actually paid a zim blog to do this can, can you believe it that's another mm. people are sleeping on yeah we paid this really? blog to publish this article wow. uh, and they published it and a lot of uh developers applied for the jobs we did interviews on skype remote no remote mm. quickly we sussed out which people we wanted we put we, we gave four people the opportunity we paid for a virtual office in zimbabwe for them to work in but i have my laptop within three months these guys were running that's an example of what we're talking about today we now have 12 people in zimbabwe working for our business uh, in fact our business is majority zimbabwe by by virtue of the fact that uh 65 of our people are zimbabwe but 12 of them are, are working out of out of out of zim and those people have never been to the uk never left wow. uh, maybe they've left the country but they've never landed in england they get paid uh a uh, 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 international salary they um <laughs> they they live a very different life and maybe this is I'll touch on some Saturday but this is where the 1k challenge came from because I quickly saw how their lives changed mm. right consistent regular money at a at a level you know what it is maybe it's not exactly a google my engineer come so right but muna gathered I got to I got to invest some money I got to go there you know what I mean I can start that let's pay them accordingly in a way that makes them feel uh, it's giving them some dignity Because you know, if right. you're getting paid those the small amounts we're talking about and I won't mention it's it's, a, it's, it's just not upon a dignity so mm-hmm. that's that's remote working that we've been doing now since doing that the number of people even in my building I've got 100 100 businesses in in our building Kumbuk office mm. uh, and the biggest one is the seventh biggest search engine it's called majestic it sits on the top floor though all of them have resorted to now recruiting from outside Uh, the uk because it's too expensive because google's taking all our developers for example it doesn't need to be developed so no no to no one come better one of my words to no one who's a wordsmith but i don't know what my words could describe but that guy's here you know what i mean that person could be sitting anywhere in the world in fact this specific lady i'm a traveler she's all in us are going to mangwana next week i'm going to malta as in california as in phuket and as long as i have a computer at shanda you need so in this day and age with covid there's a lot of companies who now appreciate and understand what uh, digital uh, what remote working is and this is the type of stuff we teach we've got a whole category within uh, the 1k challenge where we focus on remote uh, a remote uh, getting a remote job because to get that job you need to have the you need to understand the etiquette of the people who you are getting the job from you're right what i mean global etiquette you can't be i was funny one you can't send me a cv in a zim id on it because i don't know what the zim id is for example Yeah. You, you you can't send me a, a cv that walks all the way from the depot or tanga grade one kushika oku my cv and not ties one on you know what i mean so all we had to do there was I'll, I'll, there are some case studies we'll share uh, if you ever did the program of people we literally took someone angaenda kuchoro ageta degree like i got to go to mbaga share basa we literally just converted their their word document cv turns it into a digital cv in an image yake it showed kuti atonika side aso kanita bad side you know everyone's not anika side aso i got on your road anika side aso a kanichi chi instantly he was one of the 10 people that got asked for this interview the job was paying 40000 us dollars 40000 40000 and he was supposed to work from wherever he wants <laughs> they meet wow. once a year in a different country uh just to get to kuzwana on tinda go holiday for for 3 weeks and on the sunday 
um, and um, it's forty thousand. And what was the other thing? The other part of the the, the um, it was oh yeah. And then you 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 learn on the job a little bit. Then you are left to do your your own. So he did. He, by the way, he didn't get this job. He ended up he get, he got another job after that. But it's just showing you that he came from a, a guy. And I said, I'm with an interview. He'd never stood in front of a customer. He's never worked in Zimbabwe because I'm a master. He's never been in an interview. That was his first interview, and he virtually landed this job. So you think I'm gonna hit up a salary as well? A salary guy. It's gonna ten years, gonna five years. Look, it's the world is is, is ready for us. Um, one more thing I should add, Arthur. Uh, I know we're going on. Is we don't appreciate that we can communicate like we're doing now, and everyone can hear us. You're right. Our ability to speak the language we speak, the English we speak. Whether one is Zim accent, or see now, or Kubama Americans, Kubama Australians, or whatever, the fact that we not with some vowels are not is not common across the world. So as a result, if you had an interview uh, with a guy from India, a guy from Zimbabwe, and and someone else from uh, from another place, the, the, the communication you got to see, and mm. that's our trump card as Zimbabweans. We just don't utilize it because we don't know it. But I know for sure that everyone who's ever tried to recruit. From other countries, the biggest challenge I have is literally communication in autonomy. Just saying what we take in us is a conversation yeah. in it. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. That's remote working for you. Interesting stuff. Well, okay. I, I want us to just wrap up on, on the 1K challenge and pretty much sure. just a teaser into Saturday webinar. Um, was I, I want everyone who's watching us right now to be part and parcel of that. By the way, this is a free webinar. And um, if you missed the first one, please watch the replay link. And uh, if you also missed our Monday conversation, I want you to go through our wall so that you, you won't miss out. Because if you missed the first one and even watched it, the second one, you might not be able to actually understand where we're coming from. So in the uh, broadcast video on Monday, um, Puma Simon introduced the concept of a 1K challenge, which I'm going to encourage each and everybody to be part and parcel of. Uh, so I wanted to just explain it for the benefit of those who didn't watch the live on uh, on Monday. Then just an intro to, to, to start the webinar. And then we'll close off. Yeah, no, thanks for that opportunity. I think, like I said, the, the, the one key challenge is very personal to me. And you will find out the real story of Yagaba will be on Saturday. Because I don't think yeah. many people know Yagaba will be. But uh, like I said, I, I did hint on the fact that once we recruited our first group of guys in Zim and I saw the impact it had on their lives, on their families, on everything, just everything changed for them because you gave them a consistent amount of money uh, uh, over a thousand. Um, it, it made it very clear that the, the challenge we have in Zimbabwe is about getting people to stop vimering in Zimbabwe where mariage mm. and start vimering outside, right? Because yeah, <laughs> it is global. So the 1K Challenge is effectively a, a program that I set up last July, I would probably say, having worked uh, in the, in, 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 not Shandira, but consulted for my NGOs, my impact funds, my GGG, and I quickly saw that the biggest challenge they had was it cost too much money to help people. Does that make sense? When when a big NGO like the UN, yeah. someone comes into Zimbabwe and says, I'm going to set up office, also set up, uh, uh, chi, 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 chi. by the time they've started, we'll spend 100,000. Mm. So the, the whole goal for me is how do you help a, a community or a generation of people uh, for, for nothing, you know, using WhatsApp, using online learning, using the tools that we take for granted, like YouTube and so on. So the 1K Challenge is in one angle is about solving that problem for that sector of the, of the world, which is the, um, the charities and so on, because it's, it's, for me personally, you know, it's, it's a big opportunity to, to change the world, but also be a social entrepreneur, which is where I am. Uh, but it's but on the on the people who are receiving the 1K challenge, it's basically about how we can help you uh, just change your mindset from looking here to looking there for your income, and as a result, get to a point where you make a consistent 1,000 US dollars per month. Wow. And that does not mean on Otanga, Otanga, we should go make a thousand. No. This, the, the first program I got ran up for, the first trial was with eight people um, and we ran it for three and a half months. Two people crossed over the boundary of a thousand. Really great. One is still working at Mpagata Udaushiga. And with two, they didn't really engage. Well, well, the other rest didn't engage about three, I think. Didn't really engage. So they lost on the opportunity. So it's, it's normal. Then in January, we started another one, which was a year long because we realized that we needed to give people more time to fully engage and get the concepts. Uh, and in that one, 
uh, another two have crossed over a thousand bucks a month. Uh, three, <laughs> approximately about three in the last few months have told me they've quit their jobs, but they will never tell their family because once <laughs> COVID, 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 right? Uh, but about my online, and mm. I'm told I might start off being 100 bucks a month. That's still yeah. something more than some people are getting paid. But the yeah. difference is you're doing it remotely. You're doing it on your mobile phone. Just give you. Can I just give you three examples of types of job people are doing online and getting paid up to 100 bucks yeah. a month? Yeah. Hashtagging. You know when you go on these uh, what's on on uh, Instagram. Because I don't have hashtags at the bottom. Do you know that the people who post these stuff and want to get those hashtags, sometimes it's too, it's too much work to go and look for these hashtags. They actually employ people on websites, uh, my, my, my gig websites, and say, look, I'm looking for someone on Kwanza Ono Chaga, my hashtags for my posts. On the two Mirama tags, I would hashtag Ningi, hashtag Ningi, right? It totally job no bad error. It sounds so stupid, but you can do that in your free time after work and just find the hashtags and find a job for it and, and get it. The other one that people are doing is ghostwriting. Ghostwriting is effectively where I've, I have a blog. So I, so I have about 15 blogs now. And that's some of the stuff I shared on the last webinar. You know, my blogs will, will generate a significant amount of cash, but I don't work on them because I'm just providing data to Google and Google feeds me the money for it. But for me to, to run that, I, I've got a full-time business to run. So for me to achieve that level of output, I need other people to write my content for me. So I actually outsource my work to, in, I used to outsource it to uh, people in Indonesia and whatever, but Chinese say English. I was like, no, you know, I to So having moved my, that to being as a mobile operation and finding a few people who have that ability just right, I, those people are now earning uh, some cash as a result of their ability to write content. That's ghostwriting. The final thing I'm gonna tell you, which is another quick, easy, get online and start making money. That will give you just a hundred bucks. Let's not, let's not think a thousand yet, just a hundred bucks, yeah, yeah. That will change your life. Is um, uh, doing anonymous reviews. So there's a lot of people in the West, you know, review to me as a business is very important. For someone to review my product, it, it says that product uh, has passed someone's scrutiny, if that makes yeah. sense. And yeah. people will pay people to review your product. Or not to buttons, they don't notice that project, only be observation, yeah. You've heard of Anosma focus groups in the olden world where they bring you into a room and say, tell us about this. Like, let's talk Zimbabwe. A Coca Cola, um, Shreps will launch a new Mazoe. One of the ones I own Brumot, two said, no, not here. You know, the blind testing or Digima, no, much, much more markets, right? Those things. Right. Yeah, Those right. things can be done online as well for digital products. So, someone mm -hmm. will say, we're launching a new product which lets you buy airtime, right? But we need people to test it. Those people will get paid to test it and they can be doing it from the comfort of their home. So those are just quick, simple things that don't need you to know a lot of things. You just need to know how to use your phone. That's Massive. just simple. Massive. So look, the 1K challenge is all about teaching people those basic skills. And I'm not saying it's not for people who end up because but right now we're just talking about people who want to know how to get that first hundred bucks, the next hundred, the next hundred, until we get to a point where they get, they're making a grand. Because it's possible, we've seen it. You're gonna see some of the testimonials on Saturday. We've actually asked some of the people who've uh, who've been on the program to tell us their version of the story. They're different ages, different cities of Zimbabwe. They're all over the place. They're not just uh, St. George's College or something. In fact, uh, it's, it's just people who took the chance and said, I'm going to sign up for this program and I want to see what happens. You're That's right. what I said. And, and for me, it's, pro it's a proud moment for me to be able to stand here and say, I've seen the lives change because I, I, the hundred bucks here go and it's hundred bucks here in so, right. and now that they know how to uh, fish, they can go out and get more. So look, I'll stop there and uh, we can carry on on Saturday. All right, Goma, thank you so much. Um, I know we promised to do 30 minutes, but you know, we're already close to that. <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> so, Goma Simon, thanks so much. Um, looking forward to having a great conversation with you on, uh, on Saturday. Saturday. Yes. As we're going to be sharing with people how to get started okay. on making money online. We're talking about genuine platforms that you can use things that you can use in fact the things that you're doing now simply taking them online and reaching into a global market not just the zimbabwean market but even a bigger market altogether so mkoma simon kagramamba is on yeah. all platforms uh, well, what are your handles that's my name you know i'm i'm an and uh, some data as you can see uh, but let's put it this way i'm i'm just not very um 
uh, yeah, I'm not totally public. You'll find my handles, but there might not be a lot there. Maybe in yeah. the near future there'll be a lot more as I as I as I quickly realize the power of it. But uh, at the moment, you just look for Simon Kabalom online. You'll find me on Instagram. Uh, Wonderful. And, yeah. Wonderful. Goma Simon, thank you so much. We are now going offline. We've been broadcasting through Zoom. So on Facebook, we're now going offline. Thank you so much, guys, for watching and uh, looking forward to spending the Saturday with you and sharing some ideas. God bless you. And please follow this page if you haven't followed it so that you don't miss on any of our live broadcasts. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Alvaro. We'll catch up again. Bye.